Now just listen close. No, I can't get over there, but you can start it yourself. We ain't got time, so just do what I tell you. Yes, you can. You have to start it yourself. Now just make the first cut right below the shoulder. <laughs> oh no, just start cutting. Don't worry about that. Easy now. And don't worry about the mess. Oh, just cut along about six inches, but you'll be ready to sew it up in case I tell you. Uh, excuse me, my name is Dr. Lurie Markskis. Just keep cutting, don't worry about the mess. No, I can't get over there. Now, is the shoulder separating? What? All right, now, once you've made that cut, take both hands and move gently further down the bar. Just what do you think you're doing? Uh, this is business, if you don't mind. <laughs> now, get your razor blade. I don't care if it's rusty. We don't have time for this. What are you telling this person? Ma'am, I'm talking to a crazy Give lady. Give me that. Gosh, what are you doing? Uh, listen to me. I'm a doctor. It makes a big difference if you use a rusty razor blade. If you don't Put that mind. down immediately. If you don't mind, I'm just talking to this. Where am I? Who are you? This is a personal call. I know exactly what I'm I doing. Do I think I do. Doing it. I'll be taking that down. No, you won't. What's all the brouhaha? Are you Dr. Faraday? Are you a bill collector? <laughs> no. Yeah, like I haven't heard that one once or twice before. Will you tell her? Tell her what? Who is she? You should have heard what this lady was telling somebody on the phone. Now, is there much bleeding? What? Nelda, who are you talking to? Mama. She's cutting out the pattern for her new fall dress. <laughs> well, I, I guess I've done all I can here. <laughs> now, don't you feel silly. Anyway, Mama, just cut the shoulder open and insert the padding. Uh, yeah, but I was just pushing in where I thought I might be of some use. I mean, I just heard the word shoulder and cut, and then I thought... You mean you diagnosed it? That's one of those words people like hearing around here. <laughs> Sir, I understand that, but I was just trying to help. Well, only around here is get the best known know the patient before you push in where you think you might help them. No, oh, it's all right to <clears throat> find out a little bit about the patient before you push in. Most people don't like to being pushed. Uh, sir, I understand oh, that. Oh, you can barter, trade, and even one-up them if all else fails. <laughs> sir, yes, but... <sighs> oh. You can nudge them a little bit to help persuade them, and you can wheedle, dickle, and trade them, but people don't like to be goosed. <laughs> Sir, I know how to qualify a patient. Qualify a patient? Did you hear? Qualify a patient. You make it sound like you're selling them a Jeep. I don't need this. Oh, yes, you do. You found my card in a county hospital on the bulletin board. That, that would be my guess. You mean diagnosis? Am I right? How do you know that? Because that's where I put it. Three by five card. Doctor with open mind, and so on and so on and so on, needed to fill in here, well this is where you'd fill in, here at the old home, <coughs> faith and charity. The what? That's what they call this place. Don't ask me where they got the name. Anybody coming in this morning? Um, I'm on the phone here, Doc, if you don't mind. <laughs> what was I thinking? Is this one of your many splendid breaks? Mama says hi. Hi back. <laughs> Sir, I want you to know I'm a fully qualified physician. Who eats at the cafeteria at the county hospital. How do you know that? Because that's where I put my card. <laughs> Ernie, Ernie, rise and shine. Greet the new day. Uh, I'm just being curious, uh, it being a part of my nature. Is he also applying for the position? No, I think he's got a hold of the only position he's interested in. 
Thank you very much. You mean he's just... I tell you what, you tell me what he's just. Go ahead, qualify that patient. Uh, but I don't see how... Well, you might say he's one of the random sampling of the kind of character we get around here, all too frequently. Okay. He's sleeping. Merely a symptom. Very well. Sir? He isn't like the mayor or anything around here, is he? What day is it? Oh, no. The mayor wouldn't be caught dead around here. I wish you wouldn't use that phrase. It kind of rankles me, you know? You wouldn't? Oh, no. He sleeps over at the barber shop. <laughs> People actually live like this? <coughs> Sir? Ernie. Ernie! Speaking. I'm a doctor. Are you seeing somebody about that? No, I'm here to help. But what would you say is your problem? Well, for one thing, I keep seeing doctors. That's because you keep sleeping in the doctor's office. Mother, is that you? Only spiritually. Uh, no. What would you say is causing you discomfort? <coughs> oh, melancholia. Melancholia. <laughs> I can't people, people still call it. You mean you're suffering from depression? No, melancholia. Okay, I'll play. What's the difference? Well... It's my understanding, depression is something you get. Melancholia is something you marry. I beg your pardon? Melancholia, that's my wife's name. Oh. <laughs> no, it ain't. It ain't? It's something like that, ain't it? Ernie, go home. It's melon something, ain't it? Melanie Corinne. That's it. What? That's what I'm suffering from. <sighs> well, how'd I do? Terrible. Oh, oh, why? He's still here. <laughs> You're supposed to relieve suffering. But he's not suffering. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about us. <laughs> Look, is there a physician open here or not? For the right person, yes, there is. And why do I get the feeling like I'm not the right person? Well, I didn't say that. Right now, you've got two things in your favor. One, you want the job. Two, you showed up. Oh, oh, oh. Three, she's still breathing. <laughs> There's another one of those phrases that you use that kind of makes people prick up their ears. The main thing is you <coughs> did show up. Which wasn't easy to do. You didn't leave any directions on the card. Because if you take the job, there's going to be a lot harder places to find when we make house calls. And yes, we definitely make house calls. So you're doing fine. What I'm looking for is someone to fill in when, we take, when I take a two weeks vacation. Well, at risk of looking a gift horse in the mouth. <gasps> You know about horses? <laughs> Another point for her. <laughs> Why don't you just have somebody from the county come down for the two weeks? Well, we try not to deal too much with the county. And why not? Well, for one thing... Hey, hey, just get out of there. Well, just show her the book. Well, just ask, is that so hard? I'm asking. <laughs> just, just show her the book. Which book is that? You know, the county regs. You can't have it. I'm trying to make a point here. No, I said. Why do you put up with this? Because she's got her own filing system and she won't tell me what it is. You should have seen what this place was like before I come here. Just show her the book. Are you sure now? It's like pulling teeth. You can pull teeth, can't you? Huh? You asked for it. Well, thanks for the aggravation. You asked. 
This overgrown bureaucratic tome is the last county regulation pamphlet we got. <laughs> I understand the one they come out with this year is really big. But you have to go by the rules set by the county. We do not. You do, otherwise they'll take action against you. Such as? Well, you get money from the county, right? We do not. But you have to. That's how they make sure that you're following the regulations. Such as? Well, and if you don't, they'll send out an investigator. And if they find it that fault? Then they'll hold a committee meeting and can find you. How? By cutting off the money. But we don't take any money now. We pretty well stand up on our own around here. <laughs> Folks are kind of hard-headed, you know. Oh, folks, huh? So do you want the job or not? I'm not so sure anymore. Well, you better be. Doc, Doc, two things. Number one, I just brought back this little gadget here that I brought borrowed from you. Okay? And number two, you just got to come take a look at Percy because he's real down this time. In a second, Martha. Oh, no, you go ahead. A, a patient comes first. I thought we ought to get this figured out first. I should have known. <laughs> Ma'am, what seems to be bothering, uh, what was his name? Percy! Percy, yes. Uh, what are his symptoms? Well, now, I don't think he'd want no stranger to go poking around on him. You just let that be between me and Percy. <laughs> now, uh, <coughs> what are his symptoms? Well, he's down in the yard and he can't seem to get up. Oh my goodness, when did this happen? Well, about an hour ago, and he's got kind of a glassy look in his eyes, too. Getting from a fever to food poisoning, um, what did he have to eat this morning? This morning, let me think, he had six <coughs> ears of corn, oh, and a soup bone. Dr. Marcus. Six ears of corn and a, but where is he now? He's under the house and he just won't come out. What? Well, why don't you just take me to him and I hope Dr. not to Marcus! Like... What? Percy is a bore. I don't care if the man can hold a conversation or not. He's sick. No, he's a bore hog. <laughs> what? You know, like a pig, but fatter <laughs> and overfed. Martha, six years of corn. What were you thinking? Well, Doc, the harvest fair's coming up, and I got Percy entered. And we got us a real good chance of winning this year with old Je man Jeremiah's boar up and getting struck by lightning and all like he did. Boy, the Lord sure works in mysterious ways. <laughs> yeah, striking down a hog just to make you happy. Well, now, I didn't mean nothing by it. I was just a quote in the good book. When it suits you. Ernie, go home. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> she may work out after all. Now, Doc, what do I do? Okay, go on home. Don't give Percy any more food. When he gets hungry, he'll come out. And what if he don't? Well, just stand out in front of the porch Make a sound like an ear of corn. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> and why did you try feeding some of that corn to your kids? Where are they, anyway? Oh, they's down by the... I better get going. <laughs> you think you're real funny, don't you, putting me through all this? What are you talking about? I didn't create this parade, you know. Did I know you were coming here? Well, no. Did I ask you to help Martha out? Or jump in on Nelda's phone conversation? Who? Nelda. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Well, did I? Oh, no, but I just... You just pushed in. Look, that's one of the things you're going to have to learn around here. Sometimes you just have to jump in. Sometimes you just have to stand back. And when do you jump in? When there's an emergency. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Stand back. What? <clears throat> don't move, don't say a thing. It's an emergency. But you try not to make con eye contact. What in the world? <laughs> it's an emergency. Just don't move.
Silas. Doc, I done cut up my hands some. I see. And Mama said I should come on down to the Old Faith Hope and Charity and have you should look at it. I'll have to take this off. Yes, sir. You done a good job what you use. I was sawing up some old planks out back of the house. Oh. Blade bit into you, did it? Yes, sir, some. Was it rusty? Don't. <laughs> well, it was out back. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> well, Doc, what do you think? I don't know, but go see if Ernie's still hanging around and get him back in here. <laughs> Silence. Yes, sir? What is he looking at me for? I don't know, but maybe you better just stay here. <coughs> Silas, this is Dr. Marcus. No. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe you shouldn't. Uh Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Let me do it. I'll be gentle. Well, it was nothing much. Only Mama thought. <laughs> and she was right, wasn't she? Yes, ma'am. Like always. I figured we ought to stitch it up. That's what Mama thought. And that's not going to bother you, is it? No, ma'am. <laughs> Here he is! Oh, no! I ain't jumping into this! You said you had sandwiches! <laughs> We're going to be just fine, aren't we, Silas? Yes, ma'am. Huh? You shoot him with one of those tranquilizer guns or something? And then after we stitch him up, he's going to need a tetanus shot. Oh, no! Huh? You ain't doing no such thing! But... You ain't poking me! No, Silas, it'll only take a second. Get out of my way, dog! <laughs> Too much of a fight this time. What? Oh, I think we're starting to wear him down some. <laughs> you better go get Sid ready to be stitched up. Oh, I'll check on Ernie too. Oh, you want an apple? Huh? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, Ernie's okay, unless Sid is still sitting on him. <laughs> I'll check him out. <sighs> What's the matter? Oh, it, it's nothing. It's just... Well, I was wondering where this has grown. Um, what fertilizer was used, if there were any insecticides put on it. <coughs> I just don't get it. You don't get what? Well, that man comes in here and we tell him he's going to need stitched <coughs> up and nothing. He's as gentle as a kitten. But the minute I suggested giving him a shot, well, it's simple when you think about it. You sew up his hand with a thread and a needle, a thread he knows, and a needle he knows, but he gets a little bit standoffish when you pump him up with something that he doesn't know. That's just silly. Not silly, really. It's a question of priorities. 
but he should trust us and know that we're doctors. We're only here to help. Hmm. You take that apple and you question where it was grown and if insecticide was used and all, and yet you expect him to sit by blindly and let us pump some mystery fluid into him that he doesn't know anything about? I'm not sure I want this job. Too late. You already got it. <laughs> <laughs> now look, I can't tell you what you got without I can see it. Where are you now? What do you got? Well, I think I found me a place that'll rent me a room by the week. That way I won't have to commute. What do you know about Polly Jeffers's place? No, don't pull on it. You mean the whole arm just come off? <laughs> no. I'm not getting caught in this one again. We're all cleaned up in there. Oh, you did come back. Yes, I did. Good. What other acts have you got planned for me this afternoon? No, Mama, I can't get over there till tonight. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, how's the patient? Well, from what Mama tells me, <laughs> either she's read that pattern wrong, or that dress calls for four arms and a plow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for ordering from the farmer's seed catalog. <laughs> Well, I'm all geared up, and I hear, hear the tra the fish are jumping into the boat, so let's go. In a minute. Oh, I knew it. We're going to hang around here all day. Uh, Ernie, may I ask you a personal question? Don't look at me. She's from the big city. <laughs> well, shut my mouth. What kind of personal question? What do you do? Uh, I mean, for a living. I work for the city. I read the gas meters. <laughs> you read the water meters. You're kidding. <laughs> Let me guess. Uh, you and Opie here are going to go down to the old fishing hole? We're going to try. And I bet you have a bunch of country rules for that, too. No, as a matter of fact, there's a couple of them we had to change. The first one being we don't have to eat what we catch. Yeah, in fact, the last time when I got up ready to make a cast with my reel and you were bending over and my hook she caught you. She don't have to know everything, does she? She already asked me one personal question today. Water meters? Are you sure? Oh, this from a guy who don't know his own wife's first name. Oh, I do too know it. I just don't like to use it much, especially when I'm headed for big bass country with my new reel, which she knows nothing about. So you're just going to close up the office on a Friday afternoon? Well, no, matter of fact, <clears throat> just to show you the faith I have in you, I want you to run it for the rest of the afternoon. You really did believe it would come back, didn't you? It's a sixth sense I have. I can really read people. So just to show the faith I have in you, the office is yours for the rest of the afternoon. He always closes down the office on Friday afternoons, doesn't he? <clears throat> no. He leaves me here. You never shut down the old faith, hope, and charity. Well, I'm starting the truck, so let's go. Uh, well, don't let me keep you. Trying to get rid of me? No, I'm just afraid I'm going to mess up again. Oh, you're doing fine. <clears throat> Always takes Ernie a while to get that truck started. So you're doing fine. If it gets too bad, just breathe into a paper sack. <laughs> Isn't this the day that Mrs. Kimbrough comes for her medicine? That's who I'm kind of waiting around for. Something I can't handle, but you just said... Well, she's a little bit skittish, and I've been trying to earn a pie. Oh, here. <laughs> Got him that time. <laughs> so, uh, you married? Yes, ma'am, and we're still speaking. <laughs> How about you? Oh, we're in the planning stages right now. His name is Thomas F. Evans. Well, it sounds like he always called by his own name. He likes it like that. He's a lawyer. 
maybe we could get you a shot for that or something. <laughs> Ooh, not bad. And money, too. The money's not important. Oh, yeah, you ain't married all right. <laughs> Bump it! Give it some gas! Now that's not nice, Ernie. Good afternoon, I... Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you can interrupt me any time, Dr. Perkins. Oh, you're a doctor too? Yeah, I think it's the light that attracts him. Tyler Perkins, I was hoping to catch Pete before we got lost out on the lake. No, oh, he's out back. Oh, Ty, this is Dr. Marcus. Uh, Lorraine, please. Dr. Marcus, so you're going to be filling in for Pete then? I guess so, but if you're a doctor, why don't you do it? Well, that might not look so good. Oh? Yeah. For one thing, he ain't married. And that might put off some people? No, I just thought you'd be interested. <laughs> it sure fascinates me. <laughs> I work for the county. Oh, I've heard this one before. People don't trust the county. Well, that's not it entirely, you see. I'm a veterinarian. Well, I can see the problem with that. <laughs> what privilege did we owe this visit? Well, you stop flirting, young lady. What would your husband say? Oh, who listens? Well, you should. After all, he is my brother. <laughs> you two are related. Surprise you? Hang around here long enough, and you might find yours related to some folks, too. <laughs> I swear. If I ever get that truck started, I'm gonna drive it off a cliff. Nella, can we use the ambulance? You have an ambulance? <laughs> Sorta. Of. It was born a school bus. <laughs> I thought I heard a whole lot of somebody with nothing to say. Was there something wrong with that, or was that just me? What are you doing in town? Nothing business, I assume. Ah, uh, sort of. Martha called about Percy. Oh, he's down under the house. Take it from somebody who investigated the case. Wait, you didn't have to go out there, did you? No, she sucker punched me here this morning. Yeah, Martha came in here earlier, talking to Percy who couldn't get up, and Dr. Marcus here took it upon herself. I get the picture. Common mistake. She treats it like it's one of her kids. Oh, better. There. <laughs> Is my face still red? Actually, it's quite a nice shade. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways, I was just stopping by to check on you guys. <coughs> because Marty told you there was somebody new in town? Well... Whose face was a very nice shade? Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Are we going fishing or not? Faster let us speed and bullet. Just tell Mrs. Kimbrell that there's the mess, there's a... the medicine, she knows the prescription, when to take it and all. Are we gonna go fishing or not? Listen to the man. One thing though, I've been having trouble getting the truck to go along with us. Probably out of gas. I can read a gas gauge. You mean water gauge? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting on my nerves, Nelda. Ernie, how come you always go fishing with Pete? All you guys ever do is argue. You can't agree on anything. Arguing about sports, politics, and even the weather. Well, there's that, plus you ought to see him clean a fish. I can't stand it. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Kimbrough. Oh, hello, Ernie. I'm doing much better. Yes, ma'am. that's not always the case. No, ma'am. That medicine that keeps me going. No, ma'am. I don't know what I do without it. Yes, ma'am. Here's your medicine, Mrs. Kimbrough. Thank you, Nelda. What are you doing back in here? What difference does that make? Did you shut off the truck? Yeah, I did. Dang! <laughs> you must be that new young doctor I've been hearing about. I don't know how young I am. <laughs> Listen, round here people age fast and hang around like a bunch of old trees. My, you're just darling. <laughs> well, thank you. I can tell we're going to get along just fine. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> I done made you a pot. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will. I'm 
quite another conquest. Yeah? Besides me? Who else? You two? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Oh, stop it, you two. Now that's pretty strong stuff, you know. I know, I know. Like, I ain't been taking this junk all this time. <laughs> well, now, if you don't want it... Now, he's being mean. <laughs> you ain't one of those, are you? Uh, no, ma'am, not to you. I promise. She's a treasure, she is. You ought to be more like her. Would you make me a pie? Listen to the man. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> the gas! Now that ain't nice, Ernie. So what's wrong with her? Yeah, did we ever figure that out? I beg your pardon? Oh, she almost left us some time back. The boys up at the county couldn't quite pinpoint what it was. That sound about right, Pete? Yeah, nobody knew what it was, much less how to treat it. That's the trouble with these newfangled cures. You gotta know what you got before anybody will give you something for it. <laughs> Doctors, you drive me nuts. Wait a minute. But she's doing much better now. But if you don't know what she has, how can you prescribe any medicine? Well, it's not prescriptive medicine. That's some of Pete's patented. He makes it himself and won't tell anybody what's in it. It's an old Indian recipe. Which he got from an old Indian, I betcha. You just don't worry about that. But if I'm going to give something out, then... Now, who was it that told me right here in this very office that they should trust us doctors and know that we're here to help? Now, what's he talking about? Apples. Speaking of which, Mrs. Kimbrough must really like you to have made you this pie. That's a fact. She didn't know she was going to like me. She had it when she walked in. The point is, she gave it to you. She didn't give it to me. She gave it to you. Otherwise, she would have given it to Nelda or to give to her mom or something. It's a mixture of country, being neighborly, and cautious all at the same time. And if she doesn't like you, you'll know it. You ever get a pie? Mm -hmm. Me either. And here I'm saving that woman's life. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I should have never got out of the couch this morning. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Marcus. Yes, Fold Faith, Hope, and Charity. What? Oh, you must be Nelda's mother. That's right. I'll be filling in for Dr. Faraday. Well, thank you. That's nice of you to say. Nelda's on her way down now, and she said that if you should call, the... What? Well, I don't think I should be the one to... Well, okay. <laughs> now, you have both arms cut out, right? <laughs> okay, lay them next to the bodice. Now you're gonna try to sew on the arm next, right? Now, the top of the arm fits right under the shoulder. Oh, no. Well, maybe you can pin it up and then sew it. It's worse than I thought. <coughs> She's got surgeries over the phone. Maybe everybody has a kid around here or something. Well, move the needle along the shoulder. Oh, oh, don't worry about that. You can always come up with another arm. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. Well, don't talk to me. Oh, well, just do the best you can. Nelda should be over there any minute. Yes, ma'am. Nice to meet you, too. Why, thank you. Bye. I bet I've said thank you more today than I have in my whole entire life. Your whole entire life? You've been here one day and already you sound like Jed Clampett. Why, stranger, how you all talk. Why don't you sit a spell and have some grits? Lori, not in front of... I'll cover my eyes. Anyway, what were you doing on the phone over there? All that talk about sewing up an arm? Oh, people lose limbs right and left around here, what with rusher accidents and stills blowing up. What? <laughs> the lady's so unaddressed. Where's your sense of humor? I've wondered about that ever since I met him. Well, what brings you two here? Oh, I got a phone call from Mindy there that you had come to this place looking for a job. Radical idea, huh? Actually working. 
So, what do you think? Well, I've been through town several times. I've seen this place before. And you didn't report it to the Board of Health? Tell me, do you also have to brand cattle and shoe horses? <laughs> he thinks he's kidding. <laughs> what? Oh, I think it's neat. Very quaint. I bet you have a lot of good hands-on experience. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just wish I'd spent less time reading medical journals and more time watching Northern Exposure. <laughs> now, wait one little minute there, young lady. You actually sound like you're thinking about taking the job. Well, sure. It's only for the two weeks. And then you can come and visit me, and we can go for hay rides and spoon and down by the lake. Oh, yes, and we can spit watermelon seeds out through the holes in our teeth and everything. Tom! <laughs> Thomas! He's been like this the whole way down. I hope we're not too late. I hope we're not too late. Lori, we talked about this time off you had coming, remember? Oh, well, yeah, but... We were going to go to my parents' cabin. They were going to meet us there, you know, and Mother is simply dying to meet you. I know, but an opportunity doesn't show up every day. Okay, listen. We'll go up to the cabin, I'll run over a raccoon or something, and you can save it. Hey, you do that, bub, and I'll come at you with a pointed stick. And she will, too. Lori! Look, I know we had plans, but this is my career we're talking about, and I don't know, I, I really like it here. <laughs> the people aren't exactly your urban types. Oh, yes, I'm sure. And you can show them all sorts of things, too, like fire, the wheel, maybe even walking erect. Now stop that! <laughs> and the match is now underway, with Doc Marcus finally taking her stand. With any luck, she'll use a nine iron. <laughs> Do you mind? Of course not. <laughs> well? Well, think about it from my standpoint. And it isn't as if I haven't made sacrifices for you. No, just what do you mean? Well, what about last month? We had tickets to go to the theater, and then suddenly you called and canceled because some guy called about his will. Okay, that was an emergency. He wasn't feeling well that night. And then last year you canceled out, canceled out on helping me move, and then we had tickets to go to the ballet and ended up watching a police lineup. I didn't get tickets for a thing like that. You just park your car in an alley. <laughs> and then there was the time with the ice capades, and then the time after that... Hey, but this time is different. This is mother... And another thing, you little... <laughs> oh, uh, Martha. <laughs> How's Percy? <laughs> oh, he's much better. I just stopped by to bring you this. It's a jar of my special jerky. Uh, jerky, uh... Anybody I should know? <laughs> now you hash and take this. It's pretty good if I do say so myself. And it's not nearly as tough as you might think. That's cause it's my special recipe. And it works on even the toughest slabs that you could find. <laughs> you should give him some. She said slabs. Oh. I thought she said slobs. <laughs> you know, I think you're going to work out just fine around here. And we're just so happy to have you because you're just so cute. <laughs> and when the harvest fair comes, you can come and you can sit right by me. And we'll both cheer on Percy. <laughs> just who is this Percy, anyhow? Oh, Percy? Uh, he's, she's just, uh, Martha's, um... I thought you would still be here. You can close this up any time, you know. Well, hello, Dr. Faraday. I just stopped by to bring Dr. Marcus here a jar of my special jerky. Did you bring me one? Listen to the man. He is always whining. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, did she? Catch anything? A game warden cost Ernie without his license and the language. Oh, uh, Dr. Faraday, um, I would like you to meet my fiance. Thomas Fancy Evans, I assume. Charmed. And this is my good friend, Mindy Rohauer. Hello. You might say she's the reason I came here in the first place. Oh. She's the one who pointed out your card on the bulletin board. I'll remember that. Oh, so it's you I have to thank. Nothing. I love this place. Oh, by the way, somebody left the car lights on outside. Oh, I hope I haven't run the battery down. <laughs> Have you seen the whole operation? You got somebody in on the table in there? Now you done good, kid. Oh, hey, no problem. She's but, everything I told you, right? Right. Thanks a lot, Mindy. Yeah. See you later, Uncle Peter. <laughs> <laughs> you really like it here, don't you? 
Oh. Yeah, I mean, you really feel like you're helping people here. You're not just some third string medic handing out by the book lectures and taking temperatures. You really make a difference here, don't you? I think so. I think so too. Good, because she, the thing is, that two week thing is more than two weeks. What? Lorraine, I'm not a young man anymore. Uh, you're as healthy as Knox. You can't mean that. No, I mean I want you to take over when I retire. After just one day? I think even you will admit this has been an unusual day. <laughs> this has been one long day, but I thought I was just here for the two weeks and then... And that's just to make sure you would work out. And I'm sure that the town would want you to have the trial period for a parent's sake. After all, it's more theirs than mine, after all. And there's quite a few characters you haven't met. You're not saying that to scare me, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Lorraine, I'm going to hang it up at the end of the year. That's just the way it is. But Dr. Faraday... This town needs you. <coughs> this place... You're asking an awful lot. This town needs this place, and I need you. No problem. Easy for you to say. Well, what's your decision? Are you coming up to my parents' cabin with me for the next two weeks or not? Yes. Are you? <laughs> yep. This has been one long day. <laughs> now look, Martha, didn't the vet tell you what's good for Percy and what ain't? Well, I know you want him to look healthy, but he's got a better complexion than most of the teenagers around here. <laughs> what? Really, really, really. Okay, I'll write it down and I'll tell the doctor. No, I am. No, listen. <laughs> no, Martha, I'm on it. I'll tell. Well, Martha, I don't know if you want to use acne cream on him or not. <laughs> it's the county fair. Now, did I have a slight accident? I'm on it, Martha. <laughs> Later, Martha. <laughs> Goodbye, Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> She's really got her hopes pinned on Percy this year, don't she? She's preened him and cleaned him and bathed him till none of the other hogs will speak to him. <laughs> Makes you proud to be an American, though. What's wrong with you? I'm so ashamed. On my way into the house the other day, I tripped and dropped my bottle of medicine, shattered into a thousand pieces. I'm getting so feeble in my old age. Oh, you're going to have me in tears in a minute. <laughs> Doc's in the examination room. I can't believe you people even put up with me. Oh, we're just trying to get into heaven. <laughs> Mrs. Kimbro needs another bottle of the medicine. <laughs> I'd be proud to pay extra if it's an inconvenience. Oh, now don't you never offer to pay extra unless somebody brings it up first. They might not have thought of it yet. I just want to do what's right. Here you are, Mrs. Kimbrough. I slipped the one into the house and broke the other one. <laughs> That's okay. Now you know all about the dosage? I'll be careful. Thank you for being so thoughtful. <laughs> How am I doing? <clears throat> you hand out one bottle of medicine and you want a progress report on it? <laughs> you will tell me when I mess up, won't you? I'll count on it! <laughs> Dr. Faraday ever tell you what's in that stuff? No. And I don't want to know. Why? Well, if it's some sort of potent drug and it does the job, then... He never mentions it. Oh, by the way, you got mail. Huh? It's a command performance for Lord Percy. Oh, open. Thank you. It's <laughs> 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 a medical school, you know. It's a need. Well, 
well, I guess I should meet his highness. I just hope he's not too disappointed. Well, just try not to spink, speak until he winks first. <laughs> of course. <coughs> Doc, it hurts every time I do this. And don't do that. <laughs> now, what are you doing here? I'm in charge and don't you forget it. Has you been like this all morning? If you have business here today, sir, speak up. <laughs> if not, we have pigs waiting. <laughs> Any problems? Oh, uh, there was a case of the Black Plague that broke out south of town, and a couple of sailors came down with Berry Berry. Nothing much. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're not doing anything about the plague, but uh, we are going out with the sailors later. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just stopped by to check on you guys. No sense in everybody getting so defensive. <laughs> oh, and you. You owe me a dollar. <laughs> What's that all about? She bet me you'd be in here before noon. Why do I feel like a horse? And why are you here, she asks, a dollar poorer. Oh, no reason, really. Well, there's one thing I've always been dying to do. Oh, look, now you got me saying that, too. <laughs> what is it you've always wanted to do? Complain. <laughs> Look, you know, you shouldn't be wearing a white coat. It makes people a little bit antsy and they kind of clam up on you. Well, uh, I think I'll keep it on for my uh, first house call. Let me guess, Percy, right? Part of the initiation? Well, sort of. Don't say anything about his weight. Don't call his food slop. And most important, don't raise your voice! I can't shout at a pig. Well, you can, but you feel really stupid. <laughs> He's got a bit of a temper, too. Now I know you're just kidding me. <laughs> oh, no. One time he charged at a gate and butted it down with one blow. Oh, I remember. <coughs> they had to get Silas to bring him back. Uh, Silas? <laughs> it was all you could do to get Percy back into his room. You mean pen, right? <laughs> I'll be gentle. Hey, I'm here on business. I'm here to read the... Water. Yeah, you wouldn't happen to know exactly when... They're out back. Right. And I expect to find you napping on the couch when I get back. Boy, I really like her. Makes me wish we had kids ourselves. You do have kids, Ernie. <laughs> yeah, that explains a lot. <laughs> What'd you get figured out with the game warden? Oh, it's one of those community service things. Meaning? Meaning, he wants me to take my services to some other community. <laughs> she working out pretty good? Oh, the place never ran better. Doesn't surprise me. Whatever ha er, <coughs> he he always uh, uh, was doing things that... Uh, Oh, Carping God. about this or that. I don't know what's his name. Making up things as he went along. Whatever happened to him anyway. I heard he beat up the waterman with his bat. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you in the parade this year, Ernie? Guilty, I'm afraid. Melancholy is uh, sewing up my costume right now. But she won't tell me what it is. That's this Saturday, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Dr. Marcus will really love that. She really likes county fairs and all that homemade stuff. At least that's what Mindy told me. Yeah, speaking of that, when are you going to tell Dr. Marcus that Mindy is your niece? When I get a chance. Why? Oh, no reason. Only she might feel like the two of you stacked the deck against her, that's all. Well, I don't think that's going to be a problem. You know, 
I really like the Harvest Fair myself with all the exhibits and the games. And the parade, which you're in again this year. What were you last year? A duck. Oh, yeah. You kept trying to escape off the back of the float. I wasn't escaping. I was migrating. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be great fun this year with a bigger prize for the best float and a play up at the high school. And new people coming in town? That's always nice. Well, it's usually nice. <laughs> Is Dr. Marcus in? Not at the moment. May I take a message? Do you know when she'll be back? Can't say. Who shall I say call? Just <laughs> say her fiancé stopped by, I... <laughs> Excuse me. I'm here on business. I need to fill a prescription. I cannot believe she's working here. I tell you, something's made her change her mind, and I don't for a minute think it was just some two-week stint. I don't know why you'd say that. I know her pretty well, and I tell you she's staying here for some ulterior motive. Well, I don't know what that would be. Maybe she's found a new boyfriend. No, I don't think she could find anyone here that would... Wait a minute. Dear Dr. Marcus, Percy needs to see you as soon as possible. Wait a minute, I've heard of this Percy. Oh, everybody's heard of Percy. <laughs> Notorious type, huh? <laughs> and you know about him too? Well, like she said, everybody does. What's he like? Well, real lady killer type? Always prowling the countryside? Just show him the gate and he's off! Another thing, though. Can have a bit of a temper? Bit of a hothead? I thought he was a Razorback. Well, he'll have to answer to me. Well, good for you. Silas. Silas, what are you doing back here? Howdy. Mama sent me down to have you check on my hand, see how it's coming along. Oh, okay. Well, go have Nelda check it for you. Oh. You know, I'm something of a hothead myself when I get excited. You go get him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Um, tell me, you wouldn't by any chance be... You're not... You're not Percy, are you? Huh? You're looking for Percy? Okay. This isn't him, I hope. No. This is Silas. Oh. oh, good. Then I'll go out and find this Percy, and he'll never know what hit him. Atta boy. You be careful if you do. And why is that? I've done Tangle with Percy once or twice before. So? He scares me! Mommy! <laughs> well, I should have warned you about this neighborhood. And you swear you had nothing to do with it? I didn't even know Martha had called you. Did you get to meet his royal bacon? <laughs> Only as an afterthought. What? Oh, Martha just thought that Oh, never mind. No, no, just not one. Well, Martha just thought that since Lorraine wasn't married, and I wasn't married, that just maybe she'd do a little matchmaking. So she called me and then... Used Percy for bait. Well, she knows I'm a sucker for ham. <laughs> I just can't believe some of the people around here. I mean, we both could have had more pressing business to attend to. Well, I was coming into town anyway. Really? Uh-huh. And me without my violin. <laughs> uh, Nelda, can you go get a bottle of Mrs. Kimbrough's medicine, please? What? Oh, I get it. <laughs> you want me to leave the room? <laughs> No. Will you please go into the other room and get a bottle of Mrs. Kimbrough's medicine, please? Uh-huh. I see the difference now. I still wonder what's in that stuff. 
It's good for what ails you. Can make it sound like it's some sort of cure-all. Could be. I'm really glad you're going to be sticking around for a couple weeks. And maybe even longer. Huh? Oh, um, I guess Dr. Faraday hadn't told you. I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, it's nothing. Uh, so, the Harvest Fair is this weekend? Oh, yeah. It should be great fun with the parade of floats and the exhibits and the school, the play done up at the high school. The floats are the most fun for me, though. How so? Well, some of the ideas they come up with. Each class has their own float, and then there's the PTA and the Lions Club, and each with their own theme. Some folks just enter for the fun of it. I remember last year, Roger Campbell covered his entire lawn tractor up with flowers. What was his theme? I think it was. Everything's coming up, Roger. And the play, you'll just love that. Oh, they do Broadway shows up at the high school, do they? Well, they don't have much of a budget, so they put together what sort of sounds like a Broadway show. Like what? Well, this will give you an idea. Last year, they did a show where a bunch of chicken farmers got into a range war with a traveling theatrical group. Guess what it was called? Fryer on the roof? Mm-mm. A flower drumstick song? Bantam of the opera. And this year, they're doing Annie, Get Your Goat. <laughs> I should have figured. Huh? All right. What did you want with Mrs. Kimber's mess? I forget. Uh -huh. I'm going to lunch. But you just have lunch. Then I'll make it supper. <laughs> oh, by the way, your fiancé stopped by and asked me to tell you he was here. Bye. <laughs> Thomas, what are you doing here? Running off on a wild goose chase. Or maybe I should say a wild pig chase. Why did you call first? Oh, I just thought I... Wait a minute, why did you want me to call? I don't know, to... What you know I was coming? Well, sure. Warn you, huh? What? And just who's this? Hello, Tyler Perkins. I didn't ask you. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd want an expert opinion. I gotta go. I'll see you later. Bye. And just what was that all about? I was just about to ask you the same thing. What has gotten into you? Gotten into me? Ever since you've come here, you've been rude to everyone that you've met. And now you're sounding like, oh, never mind. Sounding like what? Like, I don't know, you don't trust me or something. Well, how about you? You change all of our plans at the last moment to come down here, and then when I come to visit you, everybody here sends me off on some fool's errand to some shack where I spend almost a half an hour trying to get out of a room with a hog in it. That was Percy. I got that. I thought that was your car we passed. And you didn't try to stop me? No, because I didn't get a good look. And since you didn't call first... And warn you? I didn't say that! And just why didn't you get a close look? What were you doing in that car with what's-his-name there? Uh, Thomas, you make it... <coughs> You're right. I'm sorry. You should be. I am glad to see you. You sure don't act like it? I am glad you're here. Really? Yes. What can I do to prove it? Come go with me up to meet my folks at their cabin. That's not fair. Well, you asked. Look, I have a responsibility here. Well, they've got the lady to fill in, and they can always get somebody down from the county. You don't know these people or the kind of help that they need. Now, what does that mean? It means that they depend on this place for almost everything. I mean, look. What is it? Moonshine? <laughs> Probably. You know, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> well, what about it? Well, there's this lady that the county had completely given up on. But Dr. Faraday came up with this stuff, and she's doing really great now. But what's in it? Dr. Faraday won't tell anyone. He won't even talk about it. But you do see what I mean, don't you? Yes. You won't come up to the cabin with me. Thomas! Yes or no? You never listen. Look, maybe you ought to leave. And that's your final word? It sounded like it, didn't it? And as long as they need me here, oh, you'll never understand. Oh, you'll never understand. As long as they need me here. You've been brainwashed. That's what the problem is. You can't talk to me that way. Wait a minute. As long as they need me here, and she doesn't know what's in this stuff. I 
bet if I can prove. I mean, all I need is a few lab tests, and if I can find one illegal ingredient, anything that hasn't been approved by... Hello? Marv? It's me, Thomas F. Evans, remember? I helped you see your brother? <laughs> yeah, well, I need a little favor from you. What? What do you mean you're backed up? You owe me! We'll go in on a Saturday! What is it? This is one medicinal cure that, if I'm correct, will shut down one hit clinic before you can say FDA. Don't worry, we can watch the parade from here. Take it from me, we'll have a few folks in, mostly for aspirin. I still say I could have handled it. And I'll let you. I'm just here because this is the best seat in the house. You're not going to butt in, are you? You mean push in when I think I'm needed? All right. I admit I was a bit arrogant when I first came here. Uh, how long ago was that? A week ago. <laughs> Seems like a lot longer. What? What? Oh, can't you tell? Mama was making this dress for me. Nelda, it's not all that bad. Uh, uh, turn around. Go on. <laughs> Well, uh, at least he can turn around in it. <laughs> Maybe if you spilled something on it. I did. <coughs> you can't tell it. Great. Dress you can wear to a food fight. <laughs> Wait here. I know just the thing. Where's she going? Maybe to look for an old car battery. We can pour acid on it. <laughs> Here, put this on. Oh, thank you. You know, Mama means well, but she's got the fashion sense of a mole. <laughs> I want you to wear that dress in two weeks when we go up to the school to test the kids' eyes. <laughs> How do you figure? Well, if they cover up their eyes, they're fine. <laughs> me all day, you know it. Don't think I'm coming out from behind you without somebody sets the place on fire. But then you won't get to watch the parade or go down to the park for the fair. And the parade starts in 15 minutes. Good. Everyone's here. Bad news. Uh, Mindy, what are you doing? Look, Thomas is trying to shut the place down. What? Mindy, make sense. Settle down, sit down, and take a breath. Now, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just what I said. I think he's got it in his head that if he shuts this place down, you'll come back to him. Men. What are you wearing under that coat? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Mindy! Mindy, what would Thomas do that I would... I think he got a hold of some kind of medicine from here. Um, he's having it analyzed. How did he get a hold of any medicine? <sighs> Mrs. Kimbrough's medicine. I wondered what happened to that bottle. And how did you find out about it? Well, I'm sort of dating one of the guys in the lab up at County, so... Oh. Yeah. What do you mean, sort of? I mean, he's fun to be with in a dark movie. But <laughs> if you see him in daylight, I never heard of him. <laughs> oh, that's how I met my husband. <laughs> anyway, I think Thomas is on his way here, so I wanted to warn him about the Peter. Well, you did the right thing, Mindy. Oh, Mindy, Hold on. why don't you go on out, and if you see him coming, get back in here and we'll... What did she mean, Uncle Peter? Oh, that, that's just an old country phrase. You know, like cousin so-and-so or brother so-and-so. And you're an old so-and-so. <laughs> you didn't tell her yet, did you? Nice help there, man. So she really is your niece. 
niece, best friend, at this point, what difference does it make? Uh, I'll tell you what difference it makes. Here I believed you in all your country instinct and how you could tell all about me after just one day. And then it turns out that you and my, I thought, honest best friend set the whole thing up. I am your best friend. Then why didn't you say anything? That's a good question, isn't it? And here I was all set to move in after you retired this year. You're retiring this year? Where is that parade? <laughs> what does she mean? You're retiring this year. I just told her. Oh, some other line to get me to stay? That wasn't a line. So you are going to retire. Why didn't you just call? <laughs> Good idea. Good idea, she says. Then when were you going to tell me that you are going to retire? I love your dress. <laughs> Not that I care. There's not going to be any problem with that Dr. medicine. Doc, you got to do something about that. There's Look, not going to be any problem with that what's medicine. What's in that stuff? I told you. I can't tell you. <laughs> Look, this could be federal if you're using illegal or unauthorized substances. I can't tell you. That's all there is to it. Uncle Peter, just tell us what's in that stuff. I was uh, hoping I'd find everyone here. I have a little announcement to make. We know all about the lab tests. What? How did you... Oh, Mindy. I should have figured. She's dating the entire second floor. First floor? <laughs> and what did you find out? Oh, I haven't heard anything yet. I'm still waiting to hear. Marv's going to call me here with the results, and I just wanted to be here to see all your faces. Well, you can just forget about us right now. I didn't even think you would stoop this low. You tell him, girl. And you! Uh oh <laughs> What other lies have you told me since I've come here? Hey, don't talk to him. And you don't talk to me at all. Lorraine's right, you know. What? Never have trusted me, have you? Now, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? He gets what he deserves, if you ask me. That's what I think. <laughs> What's this? Condescension in the ranks? Shut, Shut up! up. <laughs> Lorraine, he thought he was doing what was right. And it ought to land him in jail as soon as I get the investigation started. Well, don't count on me as a witness. I never want to see you again. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Who asked you? What? You were in on it too, weren't you? In on what? What are you talking about? All those moonlight strolls and drives in the country. Hold it. You've been dating him? This used to be such a quiet place. Do you mind? <laughs> we're trying to straighten something out here. She's my fiance. <laughs> That's what we're trying to straighten out. Look, I can't believe you'd pull this during the Harvest Festival. Oh, the Harvest Festival? What's that mean? Everybody has to dress up as some sort of a vegetable? Can everybody please settle down? <laughs> being dressed up as a duck, or even this year, dressed up in this get-up. But I will not stand in the middle of the float and sing, I love you, a bushel in a pack. I'll get that. Hello? I'm not here. Oh, Marv, it's me. Did you... Oh, you did. Great. Now, what's in that stuff? And I want all the... What did you find out? What? Vanilla extract, water, cornmeal, brown sugar, and syrup. It tastes terrible, but it's got body to it. Are you sure? There has to be more than... What? Three times? Yeah, thanks. <coughs> All this fuss over some cornmeal and orange peels and you couldn't tell me that? I couldn't tell anybody that. And if I'm any judge of character, 
I think you know why now, don't you? Because if Mrs. Kimbrough ever found out, then she'd realize it was just... No, it wasn't just anything. Everybody had given up on her. And I figured if she had any reason to believe in herself and not give up like everybody else, then she'd keep her faith. A placebo, that's all it was. And I didn't invent that. And I think I know how this place got its name now. But I have to have each of your word that this does not leave this room. Nobody says anything. I'm not going to promise any such thing. You hicks! You live in the Dark Ages and you think you can just stop progress? Well, I'm not going to be a party to this charade. Aha, that got your attention, didn't it? Uh, Thomas... Now you be quiet. I'm still going to start an investigation. I'm going to take this to the Board of Health and then... Uh-oh. Uh, Silas? Maybe you better do with him what we've done to all the others. Huh? What others? Listen, bub, I've been in business a long time. Do you think this is the first time something like this has come up? Yeah, but you, you... Are just a bunch of hicks, remember? Right? Aw, oh, shucks. I'm bought you. <laughs> I thought you might say that. <laughs> Wait, you mean others have... And he... Listen, buddy, why don't you run along? We're talking business here. Look, bub, I ain't leaving here at all. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't talk. I won't say anything. There's nothing to investigate here anyway. Just a bunch of syrup and cornmeal and... and... and I'm out of here. <laughs> Mindy, I'm sorry. I just didn't realize what you were up to, that's all. It's all right. Oh, and Doc, I'm sorry too. I just never thought about Mrs. Kimbrough. That's okay. I just didn't want any, anybody to have to take on my responsibilities, if it came to that. Unless I picked them myself. And I pick pretty good, don't I? The best. But didn't you have Silas come over? No. Why are you here, Silas? Like I done said, I ain't leaving here alone. Your missus done sent me to bring you on back home. <laughs> oh, okay. Tell her the colonel's on the way. <laughs> Colonel? Horn? Get it? Boy, this is a tough room. Have you ever wanted to be in a parade dressed up as an ear of corn? We can go over to the filling station and swap clothes. <laughs> so you are going to be with us for a while then. That's all right with you. Folks, I am now ask, asking Dr. Marcus to make another house call and join me outside to watch the parade. Let's all go out and watch the parade. Well, so long as I can keep this coat buttoned. <laughs> Your mother made that for you, didn't she? <laughs> she means well. <laughs> and Doc, why don't you close up shop? Why don't you tell him? We never close up the old faith, hope, and charity. We'll stand out on the porch and watch it. See, I told you everything was going to be all right. No, I told you that. Yeah? Hey, does anybody want to buy a dress? No! <laughs> <laughs>